Hello, HCISD. I'm Dr. Alicia Noyola, your Superintendent of Schools. Joining me from the HCISD Performing Arts Center today are the top 10 students from Harlingen High School South. Their placement on the top 10 represents their hard work throughout these past four years and their dedication to reaching the goals they've set for themselves. We take this time to chat with them about their experience in our schools and showcase their achievements while providing our future graduates with words of wisdom as they continue their pursuit of academic excellence. To begin, I'd like to go around the room and ask each of our students to introduce themselves, name all HCISD campuses they've attended, and share their plans after high school graduation. So we're going to go ahead and start to my right. And Raj, I'm gonna have you start out the discussion. Hi, my name is Raj Powerig. I've attended Arlington High School, I mean, I've attended Treasure Hills Elementary, Coakley Middle School, then Connor Freshman Academy, now Harlingen High School South. I plan on attending University of Texas at Dallas and major in software engineering. Thank you, Raj. Uh, my name is Kennedy Kibler. I started HCISD at Bella Middle School and then Cano Freshman Academy and now Harlingen High School South. And I'm attending the University of Texas at Austin and majoring in business. Congratulations, Kennedy. Uh, hi, my name is Destiny Marr. I attended Lamar Elementary, Jefferson Elementary, Bella Middle School, Gano Freshman Academy, and then finally, finally Harden High School South. I'll be attending UT Austin and majoring in neuroscience. Congratulations, Destiny. Uh, my name is David Cortez. I started off my HCISD experience at Stewart Place Elementary and then went on to Vela Middle School, then Gano Freshman Academy, and finally here at Harlingen High School South. Um, I plan on attending Texas Christian University in the fall and majoring in business finance. Thank you, Dave. Well, my name is Jimmy Abbott. I attended Stewart Place Elementary, Vela Middle School, Cano Freshman Academy, and now Harlingen High School South. And I will be attending Rice University in the fall and majoring in statistics. Congratulations, Jimmy. Abbott? Hello, my name is Abdi Solis. I started my HCIC experience at Ben Milam Elementary. Then I went to Coakley Middle School, Gano Freshman Academy, and then finally at Harlingen High School South. I'm going to be attending Harvard this fall, and I'm thinking about majoring in either English or history. My name is Joseph Bell, and I began my HDISD experience at Stewart Place Elementary, and then I went on to Vell Middle School, and then finally Harlingen High School South. Post-graduation, I plan on attending Washington and Lee University, where I'll study engineering with a focus in computer science. Congratulations. Hi, my name is Caleb Blackburn, and I joined ACISD at Cano Freshman Academy, and now I go to Hollingen High School South. Um, after graduating, I'm going to be going to the University of Alabama at Tuscaloosa, majoring in political science. Congratulations, Caleb. My name is Justin Armstrong. I started at HCISD at Lee H. Means Elementary, then I went to Treasure Hills, went then to Coakley Middle School, Cano Freshman Academy, and now I'm here at South. This fall, I plan on attending Purdue University at West Lafayette campus and studying engineering, hopefully with a focus in either aerospace or aeronautical engineering. Congratulations, Justin. Uh, hello, my name is Armando Garcia. I started my ACISD in uh, Lamar Elementary, then Vela Middle School, then Cano Freshman Academy, then Harlingen High School South. And post-graduation, I'm gonna attend UTRGV and study cybersecurity. Congratulations to all of you. So it looks like everybody's decided where their next step is going to go. So you all have made some important decisions. That's the very first important decision. And so I'm sure there's gonna be many more as you move forward. And so I wanna start our discussion today just with some questions, uh, information for us as a school district to know, but also an opportunity to get to know each of you individually. So I'm gonna pose a few questions to y'all. Uh, we won't go around the, the room the way we did right now. So what, if, you're, if it's a question that you're interested in sharing a response to, just feel free to, to pop on out with an answer, all righty? So here we go, let's start with our first question. So, you know, all of you spoke about uh, your plans and obviously all of those are, are very impressive and we realize that being on the top 10, you all are very accomplished in academics. You would have to be to, to get to this position. But can you share with us what other activities you have been involved in throughout your high school years. 
And the reason I ask that question of you is because as our students are listening, uh, it's not, sometimes it's not just the academic track. A lot of you have been very involved in a lot, of, a lot of other activities, and so it's going to require a lot of your time and so forth. So I'd like for, for, each, for all of you, whichever one would like to step forward and speak a little bit about what else you have been involved in aside from academics. I'll go ahead and go first. Um, David. I've p participated in varsity football, varsity track, and, and varsity baseball. And then I've also participated in FBLA. And I really enjoyed taking the opportunity to be able to participate in those things because I feel it was able to give me a break from this academic grind that we all go through. And just that little break for an hour, two hours, that little refreshes your mind a little bit and it gives you a little bit of time to relax. So then af and after that, you're able to go home and refocus your mind on all your schoolwork. And I feel like for me, that was a big part in helping me with academics. Good for you. Anyone else? Uh, I can go next. Um, I've been involved in varsity tennis, NHS, PTSA, student council, and FBLA. And I can say the same thing as David. I think it's really helped outside of school to get involved with other people, meet a lot of people, and it's a good break from school. Anyone else? I'm sure. Justin. Um, I've been in varsity swim and varsity water polo for four years and three years respectively. I'm the team captain of the swim and water polo team this year. I'm also a member of the varsity orchestra. And uh, in addition to my in-school activities, a lot of the things I've, uh, most of the organization I probably spent the most time with would be the Boy Scouts of America, which I'm still an active member of. Congratulations. Abney. Like everybody, I think when it comes to my activities, I'm kind of all over the place. I started high school doing sports and cheer. And then, you know, as high school went on, I think my extracurriculars allowed me to develop as a person in terms of leadership and just the things I value, like community service. So I think it's just important to not confine yourself to one box. And I really appreciate how we've had all these opportunities and these great mentors that really allowed us to find our way. And for me, this my senior year was starting my own initiatives and focusing on the community and just the issues that I find that are very important. So I have a question, just a follow-up question to that. So all of you spoke about a number of activities. How do you balance that? Because, you know, those, uh, several of you mentioned six, seven items. How do you balance that with the academics? So, um, like David, I, I was in varsity football. And uh, when you have, like, multiple sports and you also have schoolwork and other school activities, it's hard to keep track of time. And so I think time management was a huge thing. And just uh, I, had a, I had a little calendar that I would you know, write stuff on. And so being able to keep everything on track was super important to not fall behind in anything. The big thing for me was sacrifices I had to make, whether it be staying up late, r later than other people normally would. That was the one big sacrifice for me. Another big sacrifice would be giving up, hanging out with some of your friends sometimes. I know it's hard, but j you just got to do it because that's one of those things you have to do. And if, if you are able to do that, it just, I know it's hard, but it will help a lot and it will, will pay off in the end. Any other thoughts around that? I'd like to add to that. Like, because I was in varsity golf and we, we practice till like sometimes 6.30, 7, and we have to push it like longer than usual. And sometimes we have to work during the weekends to improve our game. And what focused us, what Coach Cruz was always have a goal in mind. And once you c complete those little goals, it eventually in the long run will pay off. And I think that was a good thing that transitioned to the, my academic career. Because you have to have those little goals just to keep you motivated, trying to push yourself a little bit further every time. Like right, Coach always say, try to get 1% better every time. Yeah. And that I stuck with me, my academic career. That's great advice, Armando. Now, Caleb talked about he would write things down on a little journal. Anybody else use some other type of way to keep track, Raj? I think the biggest thing would just be my phone reminders and putting on, on like daily repeats so I make sure that I remember to do all my work. All those alarms, right? All right. Any other last, last comments on any of that? All right. Well, then let's, let's move on to this next question because I really am interested in, in what you all thought. So this month, your top 10 billboard went up. 
What did you feel when you saw yourself up there bigger than life? Because I was seeing some pictures on Facebook and so forth of, of several of y'all and, and different people across just taking pictures with those huge billboards. What was your thought when you saw yourselves? Uh, I'd like to go. Uh, Jimmy. <laughs> when I first saw, uh, since I drive by there like a lot on uh, Harrison, uh -huh. I first started, I just started laughing because like, I was just so weird seeing myself like on a big billboard, I was just like, I mean, yeah. <laughs> but I was also very like thankful and like very happy that I was on there too. Yeah, I think it kind of like put it, made it, put it to life that like we had actually done it and like it shown like all our hard work had paid off and like we'd finally accomplished this one goal that we had all worked so hard for, so. I mean, it's kind of funny because I actually haven't gone to see it. But um, we got to drive you down here. <laughs> yeah, said. I haven't gone to see it, but I mean, I think it's kind of surreal, kind of like every everybody's been saying. I never kind of set that goal for myself. It kind of just happened. I mean, it's probably some of us. It just kind of happened. But also when I I've seen pictures of it, when I look at the billboard, it's kind of just like one of those things like this is a stepping stone, like it's the first thing to many things. And I, I'm pretty sure everybody kind of feels like that. Like we have so many great things that are coming and that we're going to accomplish in the future. So it was one of those goals that Armando talked about. How many of you did set your, a goal for yourself on the billboard? <laughs> we'll raise Abney's head too. Well, and, and it's kind of like what Armando talked about, right? You set those small goals along the way that, that keep you focused. And so I think several of you are, are, would probably give the same advice to, to other students, right? Anybody else? What was? I was really excited to see the billboard, and Destiny actually texted me that it was up, and I left my Zoom class. <laughs> and I went and saw it because I wanted to see it. But... So how many of you all took pictures with it? Me and Rose took a picture with it. Still planning on it. It took me a week to see it. Destiny? Yeah, like I told my mom she heard about it. She headed straight away, like the same day. But I took like a week, but I was really excited. What was your first thought? It's big? Yeah, I mean, it was big. And also like my mom, like her main goal for me, like she wanted to see me in that billboard. Like that has been her dream since middle school. So I was excited for her. Well, good. Hey, you, you do it for yourself and you do it for your family. Your family is proud of you. So that's a great thing. Anybody else on this side? Justin. Well, I suppose the first uh, emotion I felt was relief. Because even though I knew beforehand, seeing it there was like, OK, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not over. quite over. We still have a few weeks, but well, yes. The, the but that goal. The competition, yeah. if you will, was over. So I was happy. And then the second thought that went through my mind was, oh, wow, they actually got a good picture. Yay. <laughs> Caleb, what about you? I felt the same thing, like relief, and uh, I didn't see it in person at first. Someone sent it to me, and then I had to wait 30 minutes for my Zoom class to end, so I didn't skip. But, see, Kennedy. Um, but I, I was able to go there, and it was just like relief because, you know, my mom always said that if I was ever number 11, she'd have to make my own billboard, <laughs> just put it somewhere, just uh, number 11. So that was just a big thing for me, so. Great. Yeah, Armando? I think Joe was the one who told me, or I think we were in Mr. Rada's class, and he had said, oh, your billboard's up. And I was like, yo, I got to go. And I went during lunch, and I went there, and I parked, and I was like, yo, and I pointed, that's me. <laughs> and finally, I took a picture, and my, my mom wanted to cry at that time, but I told her not to. It's just, I know we did it, but we still got to move, push forward. Well, like Abby said, right, it's one goal of, of many future goals that y'all are setting for yourself. But... Yeah. Hey, it, it's an accomplishment and one that all of you should be very proud of. So I have a next question for you. And so this one, I'm gonna ask you to think a little bit about this one. So we talked about the billboard and that was a moment that you're very proud of. But I want you to think about a moment where you are most proud of yourself. And, and I want you to think about a moment where maybe you faced a challenge, something that you overcame that maybe it was a class that you thought, God, this one's going to be hard and you experienced challenges throughout it. Maybe it's uh, an accomplishment that you got, some kind of award that you worked really hard for besides the billboard that you felt very accomplished once you did that. Um, so let me just go ahead and throw it out, out there for you. Kennedy. Um, it was 
sophomore year and it was a tennis tournament in San Antonio and it was kind of my first big tournament so I was really intimidated because I was one of the youngest ones and it was the north side tournament and it came down to just my match and all the other matches were done so I was super nervous everyone was watching my match but I ended up winning and uh, our team won the north side tournament so it was just really exciting and honestly I can't think of a moment that matches that. Wonderful. Rush. I think one of the most proudest moments was during freshman year when they was they were releasing the first ranks ever, and just seeing that number one kind of like filled me with motivation to keep going. Great. But also the biggest challenge was being tied with my best friend Kennedy at that time, <laughs> and hoping to you know compete while sustaining friends. Mm, wonderful. Anybody else? Justin. I suppose a big one for me would actually be um, getting my Eagle Scout uh, rank, finally getting that rank after years of scouting. I, uh, I know he was here earlier, but uh, Mr. Struphart can probably vouch for the look of relief on my face when he finally <laughs> said congratulations after my border review. It was just a big accomplishment and I was really happy. And I don't think I really had any other moment in school or outside of school that matches that moment of Pride. Wonderful. Congratulations to you on that. That's a huge accomplishment. Anyone else? Uh, I'd like to go. Jimmy. So throughout my entire like high school career, I've always been on the varsity one golf team, but the second semester I started really struggling and ended up being varsity two. And then for district, you know, I had to qualify like as an individual. There's only two spots. And I ended up grinding that out. Tough trying my 25 mile an hour wins. And then I'm making it, I was just super relieved. I was literally like almost in tears when I came off the 18th green. I mean, it was such a relieving moment for me. I was really proud of myself. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Anyone else? So one of the reasons why I asked you all that question uh, is because, you know, this year has been a challenging year and all, all of you know that, but we're gonna encounter challenges throughout life, right? And so each of you, those of you that spoke, spoke about overcoming, maybe it was pressure, tension, uh, everything that was going on around you to be able to overcome and accomplish, right? And so what was your biggest takeaway about going through those challenges? Because you said you felt really great once you, once you overcame that. What lesson, if anything, did you learn from going through that challenge? I guess I can combine two questions into one. So like um, sophomore year, I made the mistake of taking Spanish three without knowing Spanish. <laughs> and so just the whole year was just, you know, staying up late and having to study terms and vocab that I didn't know and having to, you know, take tests and uh, worrying about other classes at the same time, but having that one class that you had to focus on all day, every day. And I think it taught me just uh, being able to focus on one thing and uh, working on it hard, uh, you know, always uh, comes out positive in the end if you work really hard. And so um, that was one of the things that I was thankful to be able to learn a lesson from. Perfect. I'm gonna kind of piggyback off of Caleb. I took Spanish for sophomore year too. And my Spanish, isn't that great? And so um, I feel like what Caleb said, whenever you put your mind to something and you really focus on it, like we realize that we can accomplish that, accomplish that goal. And so like working hard all night, every day, I feel like just that really drove us to um, like become better workers and better like individuals. And so like those like values have played a part in us becoming the top 10 and they'll really help us throughout college and life. Yeah. And how did y'all do? I got an A. There you go. Yeah. Well, and it could have been very easy, right, to say, well, I'll, I'll be okay with a B or I'll settle. But it's that work ethic that you spoke to that, yeah. that was a critical piece of overcoming the challenges, right? Jimmy, what was your takeaway from that whole experience? Uh, what I took away was how important consistency is because some people, you know, coming up on a test or maybe like a golf tournament, they work really hard like just the night before or the day before, but 
if you just spread yourself out throughout all that time, you're pretty much guaranteed you're going to succeed. And I mean, I think that's, that has helped me throughout my entire academic career and my golf career. That's why I think I am where I am today. Just keep pushing at that same rate and you'll be fine. Great. Dusty, same thoughts? Different thoughts? Oh, um, just, it's assurance that I could get like over the next challenge. If you like take the step, take the challenge, you get it done, you could get the next one. Yeah. When you succeed at one, it sets you up, right? Yeah. To know that you can do it at whatever the next challenge that comes forward. Yeah. Abby. Yeah, I just kind of want to say in terms of like personal challenges anybody goes through or things like that, obstacles, it's important to realize that your challenges don't define you. Like for those students who have certain barriers that hold them back from achieving things like this or just certain accomplishments. And um, on a similar note, like don't be afraid to take on those challenges that, you know, may be scary. Like don't let fear drive your life in terms of, you know, wanting to do more or do things that nobody else has done. Great advice. Well, going along the lines of Avenue, the challenges obviously they don't define you, but I feel like how you take on those challenges and how you attack them is what really defines you as a person and defines like your character and what you'll do whenever something that isn't so easy comes up and how you like react to that. So I feel like your reaction is like a good testament to what kind of person you are. And so, like, if you react, react poorly, you don't want to do it. It's just like, like, I don't know. But if, like, you continue pushing and you continue, like, fighting, then it shows that you really want something and that you can do that for anything if you put your mind to it. It's great advice, guys. Appreciate that because we you know we're going to have students coming forward and it's that drive, it's staying focused and, and exactly like Avni said, uh, it's not going to define you. It's just going to build you for the next challenge. So thank you all for that great advice. So here's, here's our next question. So in XCISD, we like to highlight our teachers and those teachers that truly impact a child's life. Uh, so I want you to think about teachers here in HCISD that you've had from pre-K to 12th grade. I want you to think of a teacher that made you feel that they really cared about you and who you are as a person. And then as a follow-up question to that, what did they do specifically that made you feel that way? David? Uh, for me, it was my current calculus teacher right now, Mr. Rada. Um, I don't know, he has a, I guess, funny way of showing that he cares. It's different. It's unorthodox, but you know that he cares. And the way with me, how I knew he cared is because he adjusted to the way I knew how to learn. With me, he com for me, he was more of a coach than a teacher. And that's how I like to see him. He was more of a coach than a teacher. Because for me, I, him being that sarcastic guy, it reminds me of a coach. And I'm able to learn better to someone teaching that way. And he was really able to do that for me. And that really enabled me to learn a lot more than I would with any other teacher. And I can't thank him enough for that. Wonderful. Yes. Kennedy? I think I can speak for a lot of us when I say Mr. Liel. You can tell he truly cares about everyone. And um, I had him for AP Art History and then AP uh, 2D Art. and. Um, I actually never really like had a passion for art, but then I took his class and I ended up submitting a portfolio and ended up realizing that I actually really like art. And it was something that like outside of school, cause I really stress about school. So it's something I could do that kind of took away from that. And he was always there. He's always there for everyone. If you just want to go in there and talk to him, he always has coffee, which helped me get through the day. So I think Mr. Liel has been a really great teacher. Wonderful. Justin? Mine's actually not going to be a high school teacher and not necessarily a teacher. It's actually one of my librarians that I had. Uh, when I went to Treasure Hills, there was a librarian there named Durham who probably is one of the most influential people in the school district that I've worked with. She really got me to enjoy reading. Uh, 
Hmm. I'm sure anybody here who's known me for more than a couple of years knows that I'm an absolute bookworm. I, I like books. But she was the one who really got me to enjoy, enjoy reading above my level and always seeking new perspectives on things. AR testing was a big thing for me in elementary and mm -hmm. she got me to look beyond just testing and instead look at the book and the meanings behind it. And I will always thank her for that. She doesn't work with the district anymore, but I, I will always thank her for everything she did for so me. So what did she do specifically? Give, in particular, she would um, give me lists of books to read because I would finish all the ones my teacher told me to read. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was one of those kids. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. Look at where you're at. Joseph. Miss Welch, because, like, I don't know, she always had a smile on her face, and she had, like, this personality that she's always happy, even whenever she may not feel that good or, like, be doing all that great. And just, like, her personality and her, like, presence made you feel better, I feel like. And so, like, even when you're on an off day, you don't feel like good. Miss Welch is there to make you feel better, and so. And so, I, just just so our our audience knows, tell us who Miss Welch is and where Ms. she's Welch at. Miss Welch is uh, the tenth or eleventh grade English teacher at Harlington South. She teaches AP English Literature. Yeah. Oh, language. My bad. Until we just uh, Miss Welch was a key uh, teacher in my life too. Even though, like, sometimes you're just having a bad day, and then just going to that class, it just makes your day. It can switch this. She makes you like switch from going a bad day to a good day. Sometimes you just you're just not having it that day, and you just go, go in there, and you just feel at home. It's like a mini home at school. That's how I always considered it. And what did she do that that created that kind of environment? Just her her personality and the the subject we like she would teach would be like it's nonfiction. We'll read like Frederick Douglass. It's like a serious topic, but she would put a twist on it that make you think of different perspectives. And she'll give her like her life experiences to relate with you. She's like, I've been there, so don't worry. And she'll like play to your, your strengths and she'll work on your weaknesses. Anyone else? Abdi? Um, I just want to talk about my second grade. Um, my second grade teacher at Ben Milam, her name was Miss Gunthu. Um, so when I was in second grade, I was kind of you know, going through a lot of personal family things. And she was just that one teacher that kind of really changed my life. Like, I don't know where I would be if she wasn't my teacher. Like, it was that big of an impact. I was really reserved because of the things I was going through and I wouldn't want to speak up in class because I was just in my head. And she challenged me to um, read my compositions, like my writings in front of the class because she saw my potential and she saw what I could do. And so I just remember going in class, I was really shy and embarrassed. And I just day by day would read in front of the class and it just really helped me learn, you know, a lot of the skills that I have now, but it also helped me develop my love for writing and reading. And yeah, like without those two things, I really don't know where I would be today. So yeah. Isn't that amazing that you can be impacted that young? And you, you spoke about how it really sets you up for the future at, at such a young age. It was a very big moment and um, in terms of like how you're saying how they cared for you she would sit down with me and when things happened with my mom's health she was there to like sit with me and like talk to me about things and just cheer me up so I really appreciated that and yeah like she really did make a big impact on my life. Jimmy. I'd like to attest to what David said about Mr. Rod I mean just such an amazing teacher with an amazing personality I mean there's no class like that where I've actually Every day, I'm just so happy to go to this class and I absolutely enjoy it. Because you know, every day, not only are you gonna learn like a lot for the amount of time you have, but you know you're gonna laugh, you know you're gonna enjoy your time. Because he is just so sarcastic, he likes to get in these <laughs> silly arguments and likes to bring up past uh, experiences and stories. It's just so funny and absolutely amazing math teacher too. I mean, without him, I would not. <laughs> be at the math level where I am today. And he's definitely developed my love for math and calculus and it makes it seem so much easier than what people from other teachers would, would say. I just can't thank him enough. He's just a wonderful teacher. Rush. For me, it was my sixth grade math teacher, Mrs. Hernandez. I think she's teaching eighth grade math now. It was my first, it was like, 
Wait, at Coakley? Yes. Uh, it was like a new environment going to middle school. I was like a shy and timid kid, still kind of am. But her environment in class just was very comfortable, helping everyone, including me, grow out as a person, grow out of shell. And she's always been there, even through seventh and eighth, even now, helping me with anything I need. Ladies, either one of y'all? Well, uh, I have to agree with Kennedy. Like, Mr. Leal had a major impact in my life. Like, his class, the feeling is just so welcoming, and I feel like I was able to get out of my shell and make more friends. Well, you know, and, and all of you spoke about the learning, right? And, and what great teaching there was, but also on the personal side, how these teachers built connections with you all as individuals, right? And so when those two come together, that's when we have, we have teachers that change people's lives. And so uh, thank you for, for giving a shout out to our teachers. Certainly as a district, we try, but when teachers are able to hear from their students, you know, that, that for them, I think, is one of those rewarding pieces. So, so thank all of you all for, for uh, speaking to the impact that your teachers have had on your, on your lives. So I have another question for you. Uh, it's also a reflection question. Uh, so as a school district, one of the things that we've been very focused on is providing opportunities for students, opportunities and choice so that you all have an opportunity to really study what's important to you, what's of interest to you, that really will benefit you beyond just uh, your time here in HCISD. And so for example, we have a number of academies that we have opened a across the school system. We have Fine Arts Academy at the elementary, next door are Gutierrez Middle School of Arts and Sciences, uh, we have STEM Squared, we have a lot of uh, CTE academies that are happening at the campuses and so forth. But out of all the things that we have done as a school district, what's one change that we have done that you think really benefits HCISD students? Uh, Caleb. One thing that I, I think is really cool, especially recently, was uh, the partnership with SpaceX and all the things that the district has been doing with that. and. Uh, I think just uh, how SpaceX is just uh, something that is something that you can look forward to in the future is something that would have been cool when if I was younger and just um, all the stuff doing with that and then including the uh, academies. I have a younger brother and so him having the chance to go to these different things and experiencing these uh, different uh, academies and schools and having an opportunity to uh, truly experience what he wants to do in the future is something that I'm excited for him. Wonderful. Rush? I think that just the biggest impact overall is allowing students to have options growing up. Because back then, you know, there wasn't really anything in middle school, maybe early college, health professions, but nothing really in my interest. So like something like STEM squared, I would definitely would have explored that opportunity. And I think having options is the best thing for students. Anybody else? Justin. Um, my mom's actually a principal at Sam Houston Elementary and uh, they recently got, uh, got their International Baccalaureate certification and uh, I don't know any of the kids that have gone through it yet but from the things my mom's told me, the stuff she's shown me from it, it actually sounds like it's a really cool program, kind of teaches kids to learn in a different way that mm -hmm. makes, it would have made more sense to me when I was an elementary age kid. It just, it's a really cool program from what I've heard and I, I wish the district had, I had gotten a chance to do it, but I'm glad it's happening. And I think it's more than just her school. I think there's another one. We too. have two. We have two IB elementaries, one at Sam Houston Elementary and one at Austin Elementary. So we're excited about that initiative. Um, I think just like schools pertaining to like CTE are pretty important because I feel like not everyone like wants to go to college. And so building your own trade is really important. And so like if you want to go into welding or you want to go into like robotics, I feel like it's really important to develop that from a young age. And I think HCISD doing that really helps a lot of kids who may not be able to afford college or be able to go to college. And they're able to make a trade for themselves so then they can make a living. And so like, I'm in a CTE class with Jimmy, we're in networking. And so being able to see that like firsthand, I feel like it's really important for kids in high school or like throughout all ages to be able to build a trade for themselves. It's wonderful. Evan. Um, 
Yeah, I agree. The specialty schools and all the programs that you guys have available to students, I think it's important because it allows us to explore and just rediscover new interests at a young age, which is also, like Joseph said, is, is very important, like in my opinion. But I would also like to say that, you know, the way that you guys have implemented the Student Advisory Board, I think it's very impactful because it allows students like myself to voice our opinions and tell you guys what we want to see in the future. So I think that also plays into, you know, the student academic experience here at Harlingen. Wonderful. On this side. Uh, kind of what Araj and Caleb were saying, just the opportunities you're giving this younger generation of uh, students, it's, I feel like that's amazing just because they're able to explore those different avenues and find what they love. And I feel that's a big thing right now, just finding your purpose and finding your love for academics. Is, it's helping so, these younger kids so much to do that. And I feel that it, that's just amazing, helping, just, it's helping our younger generation so much, just being able to find what they love to do. Kennedy. I think it's also like finding what you don't want to do because all of high school I took health science classes and I was kind of like, um, thinking I was going to go down that route and then I ended up changing to business. So I think it's also being able to explore so you can find out what you don't want to do and what you do like and kind of weighing the different options. And to do it right now while you're in high school, right? Mm -hmm. not, yeah. <clears throat> not get to college and get two, three years in and you realize uh, this isn't yeah. for me, right? And so that excellent, excellent statement to that because it is, it's finding what you're passionate about and in the process, you may discover what you're not passionate about. And so, so, so glad that, that uh, you all have had some opportunity to take advantage of that, but uh, no, no different than what Caleb spoke about. His younger siblings will have those opportunities and that's always a, a, a great thing. So I have one more question for you, actually one more, and then I'm gonna ask a, a one last follow-up. So most of your, 17, 18 years old, and you're gonna be going off to college. And uh, if you reflect back on your high school years, it, they went by really fast, okay? And so time does fly. And so I want you to think about where do you see yourselves in 10 years? So 10 years, you'll be 28 years old, more or less. Where do you see yourself at that point in time? <laughs> um, Lord willing, hopefully I've graduated law school by then and passed my bar exam. Mm. And hopefully I'm working with the law firm I'm currently interning at. I have an internship at. And so, like I said, Lord willing, I'm done with all that. And so I could move on to my actual career instead of the learning part will be finally over and I could <laughs> move on to my career and start doing what I love. Congratulations. Kennedy. Really similar to David, I also hope to go to law school. So it's a lot of school, but I'm excited for the school part to be over after eight-ish years and get my career started after that. Well, time will go by mm -hmm. fast. It's, eight years sounds like a lot, but it goes by fast, especially if you're doing something you love, mm -hmm. right? Anybody else? Justin. Um, hopefully in 10 years, I will have graduated uh, college, hopefully with a master's of some kind of engineering by then. I'm not going to tie myself to aerospace because I don't know what all the classes will entail yet, but hopefully aerospace. And um, hopefully I'll be working at a, at a firm somewhere doing what I enjoy with uh, aerospace and planes, rockets, you name it. There you go. Armando? Yeah. Uh, Oh, in 10 years, I plan to see myself after I graduate with my bachelor's in cybersecurity is either work for the FBI or the NSA. I don't want to like, like my passion was always to be like uh, the guy in the computer that says, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that was my, my goal, my dream. And so that's what I want to strive to be. And after that, I'll probably get my master's in, uh, in uh, computer science, but uh, applied computer science. And I want to try that and see where I could branch out and be a, not the bad hacker, but the good hacker. There you go. <laughs> Anybody else? Ebony. Um, I can firmly say that I know where I'm gonna be just cause like I'm interested in law and like writing and all these things. But I just do hope that whatever I'm doing, I'm using my passion for good and just, you know, trying to advocate for change and for people's rights and things along those lines. We'll be looking out for you. 
of this site? Jimmy. So in 10 years, I hope, I hope to be done with both my bachelor's degree and getting a master's in. I'm probably going to do statistics, but I don't want to tie myself to that idea. And I just want a stable like job that I can make enough like money to have other side passions. Like I want to keep playing golf and whatnot and not sure what else, but that's about it. Good. Rod? Ten years, I hope. I graduated with like a bachelor's or perhaps a master's degree in software engineering. And I would like to see myself working maybe in like Silicon Valley at, at Google, while also keeping my passions like video games. Good deal. Anybody else? Justin? Um, I feel like similar to Abney, I kind of know what I want to do, but I want to be able to do something that I enjoy. And so in 10 years, I want to be able to like look back and say, like I did everything right or not right but like to the best of my ability and that I did it like to where now I can enjoy life and I'm doing what I want to do and so I want to pursue engineering obviously and so possibly get a master's in engineering or maybe even work in the field or maybe not 10 years is a while and a lot can happen but I just want to be able to find what I love and continue doing it and just help anyone I can to find their passion as well. Destiny? In 10 years, I plan on being a physician assistant. Maybe on the side, like, I'll study more to become a physician. But my, my, my main goal is to travel. Like, I want to travel everywhere. So, nice. yes. So, Caleb. So, I know that people say that time flies when you're having fun. So, I guess I had a lot of fun in high school because it, it fell really fast. And so, uh, I know these next 10 years are probably going to be really fast as well. So um, in 10 years, I hope to uh, have graduated college already and law school because I also want to go to law school. And uh, just being able to have a, a profession that I'm really interested in and then also have enough money to support a family. Good. So summarizing some of what y'all have said, you know, so set your goals. Don't give up on your dreams. Keep chasing them but more importantly, do something that you love. Because when you do love what you're doing, time does fly. And next thing you know, to, to your point, right? High school went by really quickly and all of you have spoken of just how much you, you've enjoyed that experience. And so when you're enjoying what you do, time does fly. But it goes super slow when you're not enjoying it, right? And all of you I'm sure can think of a time, a hopefully not a class, but a class where the time didn't go fast enough, right? But when you're enjoying what you're doing, time flies. And that's what I hope for every single one of you, uh, that 10 years from now, you're turning around and you're asking yourself, where did the time go? Right? Because you've enjoyed the ride all along the way. So we're almost done. I have one last question for you. And every one of you is going to answer this one. And Armando, this time I'm going to start with you because we let you go last. So I want to give each of you an opportunity to give a shout out and thank someone in your life for his or her contribution to your success. So Armando, who's your shout out to? I just want to shout out to my family for raising me and pushing me f like through high school and always telling not to give up and just being there for emotional support because sometimes you just, just need that extra push when you're just like, ah, I don't want to do it. Ah, no, you got to do it. <laughs> and just push you forward, and yeah, that's it. Great job. Justin. Uh, as Armando said, I'm probably going to be my family. My mom and my dad, they've uh, been, they've get, given me all the support I could ever want and more throughout my life. They've always gotten me to keep my focus on what I really wanted, even though sometimes I would get distracted. They would help me stay my course and um, get me where I am today. Good. Caleb? Just a piggyback from both of them, I'd like to thank my mom and my dad. And my mom always said that uh, she doesn't really care if my grades were, you know, lower than usual or lower than most people. She just wanted me to try my best because she knew that if I tried my best, I'd be able to be successful. And so um, their constant support through, you know, elementary, middle school and high school and in the future is just uh, really encouraging. Jessa? Uh, well, I'm going to go off of them, too. 
my family. So um, they've served as role models for me and I can look up to them, but they've also supported me in everything that I've wanted to do and they've pushed me to do that. And for that, I am forever thankful because they've gotten to be where I am today. And so without them, it's, I don't know, it's hard to say like, I could be here. Yeah. Good job. Yeah, I'm gonna say the same thing. My family, they've just been a really great support system. And especially my parents, they were never really hands on my education in terms of like expecting me to be top 10 or all these things. But they really just raised me through example and just showing me that they could get through their own personal challenges. Therefore, I could get through them. And yeah, they just they raised me to be independent and, you know, strong minded and willing to do whatever I have to to get what I want done, you know, whatever I, I'm trying to achieve. So, yeah, I would definitely say my family. Wonderful. Jimmy? Yeah, and also for me, my mom, my dad, I mean, from the beginning, since I was around four years old, we'd go on car rides to Oklahoma, and my dad would be giving me little addition, subtraction problems to do <laughs> while you're on an 11-hour drive. And, man, since they're both teachers, I always knew a lot about the academic route and all the education, so they always make sure, always checking my grades, make sure I'm in tech, so that's really helped me not only with academics, but throughout the rest of my life, my mental health too. Really thankful for them. Oh, I'd like to say, to thank, to shout out my family and friends. My friends because they give me an opportunity to relax and just be myself around them. And then my family because they've given me the opportunity to look up to them just because they've accomplished so much. and They always want the best for me and I know they always have the best in mind for me. So just always to listen to them and listen to their advice and take their advice. And I feel that has helped me so much grown to the man that I am today. And I can't thank them enough for that. Great. Justin? Um, I'd like to give a shout out to my mom and dad, especially my mom. She has made so many sacrifices. She's the type of person who puts others before herself. She's like my motivator, my best friend. She's the person I look up to. So, yeah. Good. I'm also going to say my family. Um, they, I definitely would not be where I am today without them. And I think also moving, because um, I moved from Michigan to here in sixth, sixth grade. And I think it also brought me a lot closer to my family because I had to start over. Mm -hmm. And it just showed me like that my family is the one that's always going to be there for me, especially my parents. And I got really close to them, and they've been my biggest supporters ever since. So, yeah. Raj? I would of course thank my friends and family, especially since my parents, we immigrated here about 14 years ago and they've always been my main motivators to push me. But I think the biggest shout out I would give to is my, these amazing friends I've made online since like elementary, middle school. Like even though you've never really met a person physically, they've always been there to you know, support you, respect whatever decisions you make and just be there when you need someone. I think everybody was pretty consistent on who your biggest shout out went to, right? So I, I wanna thank you all for, for hanging out with me this morning. Uh, gave me an opportunity to get to know each of you a, a little bit better. Um, but aside from that, you know, I'm super excited at what the future holds for each of you. I think if you're staying consistent with all the things that you did in high school to get yourself to this position, I think there's no doubt that the goals and, and the dreams that you shared with me this morning, you're, you're going to achieve. And so I can't wait to see what 10 years looks like from now and, and see if we're all in, in the places that we dream of being. But I have every confidence, every confidence that each of you is in a position to be able to accomplish that. And then the, the only other thing I wanna share with y'all, all of you spoke about family and how critical that part has been for you. And, you know, the, if there's one thing that you can always count on and you've been able to count on for the last 18 years has been your family. And they will always be there to support you. But I want you to know that as you graduate, family doesn't necessarily have to be blood related. Your friends can be family. And so I want you to know that HCISD is forever a part of your family. 
So whether you're in college and there's something that you're not quite sure, and I think you know this, you have people in the school system, you have counselors, you have principals, you have all sorts of people that are going to be there for you. And so wherever you are in life, wherever life takes you, know that you always have a home here in HCISD and people that, that are ready to step up and help you in, in everything and anything that you need. So thank you all for, for joining me this, this morning. I appreciate it. I'm super excited. Th we're three weeks away from graduation. So that too will fly. So, so I'm excited to see, to see you all in a few weeks and be able to hand that, have, have uh, the district hand that diploma to you. So thank you all so very much. Hope you all have a, a great rest of the day. Thank you all.